You're listening to The Other Side Podcast with Jesse and Caleb, where we are discussing polarizing issues that matter for today and releasing God's abundance into your everyday life. Hey, it's Jesse here with The Other Side Podcast. And before we kick this episode off, I wanted to let you know about an opportunity that you have to support what we're doing here at The Other Side, Caleb and myself. If you head over to patreon.com or just click the link in the show notes, you'll be able to take a look at some of the exclusive content that we will give you when you choose to support us with any amount. Some of the things that you'll have access to are live interactive healing and prophetic webinars with Caleb and myself and even some special guests from time to time, new books and resources before anyone else with special patron prices, exclusive looks into the daily lives of Caleb and myself, and even live podcast recording, so much more. This is an opportunity for you to partner with us in what we're doing here, and also an amazing opportunity for us to connect with you in new and exciting ways. So please take a moment to check that out, and on with the show. Hey everyone, welcome back to The Other Side Podcast. I am Jesse Berkey, and I'm here with my esteemed co-host, Caleb Hires, and we are in 2019 it's pretty unbelievable that we are here already i know that for a lot of you 2018 seemed like a blur there were parts of it that were that way for me too but here we are at the time of this recording a few days old in the 2019 and we are we are eager to see what comes in the new year and i hope that all of you are feeling the same way caleb how the heck are you man Doing great. I'm I'm right there with you. I'm eager for 2019. 2018 was was awesome for me. I mean, a lot of people had a lot of difficulty and it had challenges, but I loved every moment of it. So yeah, you know, I I talked to a, a lot of people who had a lot of trials in in 2018. You oh, know, which yeah. is I'm just thinking of it now. A, another really big year was 2008. Let's hope that that's. Are we on like a 10 year cycle here? <laughs> with this <laughs> but i it, it seemed like there were there were a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of struggling a, a lot of healing taking place in 2018 it mm-hmm. seemed like there were there were a lot of people that god called into more of a secluded place to where it he was he was cultivating and creating a safe atmosphere for people just to be refreshed and uplifted mm-hmm. and allow some of the wounds of the of the past to be healed and i know that there are a lot of testimonies to that effect. And now as we're coming out of that time, we are getting ready to to roll into a new season of victory. And I feel like we should be eagerly anticipating the things that are coming. Would you yes. agree with that? Absolutely. And that I posted on Facebook apps actually about uh, just finding things to be thankful for because there were so many that seemed to have such a hard time and 2018 and you know we reproduce what we behold so the way you end something is the way you begin the next thing so we i was just encouraging people like you know take uh, take a moment and just write down even if it's one thing that you can be thankful for in 2018 start with that in 2019 thanking god for that one thing because that's how we we you know that's how you start well right and so i totally anticipate amazing things coming and Got a lot of plans, got a lot of things happening, a lot of balls in the air, you know, juggling a few things, but <laughs> it's good. Yeah, I think we could do a whole episode on thankfulness and gratefulness and the positive effects that that has. There's a lot of research that has come out mm-hmm. recently that has shown that the more grateful that you are or the more thankful you are, the better you do mentally, but not just mentally, it's it, everything is connected. Your whole body, your physiology health wise, everything improves the more thankful for you are. So if you can find that thing, hopefully you found that thing from 2018, multiple things, multiple victories. Uh, and, right. and that's the thing too, when you're coming out of a season to where there was a lot of healing, I think sometimes you're tempted, you're tempted to look back and think all that happened in 2018 was was healing from the wounds, or, or there was this trial or this struggle that that I had to deal with. And the victories and the celebration and the good things and the happy times are kind of lost in the shuffle of that. Mm-hmm. It, I would encourage you to look back on 2018 and look at the positives, look at the highlights, the things that God did in your life, the new things that he brought to you, because he's always looking to do that. I've ex- I, I experience 
a God who is always looking to build in my life hmm. and to bring, to bring newness and a fresh outlook and, and, and just sweet, a sweet aroma, no matter what's going on, no matter what circumstance I'm in, I don't think that he takes and he compartmentalizes parts of our lives where, okay, in this, in this part of your life, you're not going to experience any joy. You know, (laughs) I I just don't think that happens. I think that there are harder times than others, but I think that if, if you are able to look for the good things and if you're able to, to, and, and that's just not mind over matter. It's, it's recognizing that there was pain, but also recognizing the victory that was Mm -hmm. there. And I think that we need a whole lot more recognition of the victories and the celebrations. Yeah, because I mean, it says in Second Corinthians two fourteen that you, he always leads us in triumph and victory. So even in pain, even in healing, if you're following Jesus, he's leading you in victory. Like there is victory around you. You just have to see it. You got to see what God is doing instead of complaining about what God is not doing. Because there's always a continual leading in victory with Jesus. He's never not leading you into a place of victory. You know, so that's the that's definitely the positive effect and you know everyone knows and everyone knows verses like the joy of the lord is our strength but we just say them and don't really sometimes apply them because that word strength is actually stronghold joy the joy Mm. of the lord is a stronghold it actually protects you it's actually a a, not just a you're feeling stronger after it protects you it's like a like strongholds in your mind except a good thing in a good way you know and so (laughs) it's it's a positive stronghold and it protects you from uh, despair, from, you know, apathy, from angst or anxiety or whatever. It's just, if we choose joy in every season, right? Just, I mean, it's all throughout scripture that we can make a choice, choose this day, you know, death or life, choose the power of death and life or in the time, choose who you will serve, choose. And so absolutely, if you're listening to this and you have had a bummer of even a bummer of a 2019, because we're a few days in, and that's possible. Mm-hmm. Choose joy, you know, choose thankfulness, choose gratitude. It's actually just something that happens from the inside out. So happiness isn't determined by our happenstance. It's determined by his holiness in us. So we can be those people. And I'm, I'm excited. I'm glad I have friends like you, Jesse, who are always looking for the good. Hey, back at you. I, I feel like the last thing you said is a repeater. Can you say that again? Happiness and happenstance. Yeah, happiness is not rooted in our happenstance. Our happenings don't bring us happiness. Sometimes they can, but it's just icing on the cake. Happiness isn't based in happenstance. Happiness is actually Ooh. based in holiness because he hated lawlessness and loved righteousness. Therefore, God anointed him, Jesus, with the oil of gladness beyond all his compares- his companions. So happiness is actually the result of holiness. And so Christ in you is the hope of glory. The holiness of Christ is in you. And so there you are, happy as can be. You just don't know it. <laughs> Heck yeah, you're, you're starting to roll now. I'm saying, <laughs> watch out. You get my preacher tongue going. <laughs> All right. Yes, he has He has led us out of 2018 in victor, uh, out of victory, out from yeah. a place of victory, and into 2019, into continual victory amen um so we are we are also at, at a time of the year where everybody and their brother who who has a prophetic inkling <laughs> <laughs> is releasing their word for 2019 have you come across any that you can recommend uh yes but honestly uh, the one i most highly recommend is i i was that guy this year jesse i never am that guy but i got a word <laughs> i got a word for the year I was like, wow, I'm that guy now. Here I am. Yeah. <clears throat> Go check out Caleb on Facebook and listen to that word. Very and simple. Be stirred. <laughs> I didn't actually post it on Facebook, but I said it at church. It's The Lord told me it's the year of the yes. Oh, good so word. We say yes to him and he says yes to us. The yes and amen 2019, the year of the yes. That's what I heard the Lord say. So, yep. That that's good it. stuff, man. <laughs> cool. That is that simple, but it's so profound. Yep. Those are the those are the best ones because they're they're easy to understand, but they just punch you right in the right in the heart mm-hmm. and dig down deep in there and be like, oh man, that's such a simple word, but it's doing so many good things. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
I was listening to the Lord earlier today, and we're going to talk about we're going to talk about dreams. We're coming into 2019, and many of us have had dreams that God has birthed on our hearts that we're currently walking out, or or they are yet to to be birthed into reality. And so we're going to we're going to talk about those dreams and we're going to talk about what God has to say about dreams. Some of us need encouragement. Some of us have been pretty discouraged because it's not happening as fast as we thought or it looks different than we thought it would. Or we feel like we have done everything that we can do and we've ex we've experienced what we would what we would call complete and utter failure in that. So we're going to we're going to look at that. We're going to talk about some reasons why why the dreams fail. And we're also going to talk about, I heard somebody say recently, and this is, I, it really struck me and it, as something to just reflect on when, if ever, is it, is it time to let go of a dream? Like when, ha, when do you reach that point to where it's okay to say, I release this because for whatever reason. And so we can get into that, but I was listening to spending some time with the Lord the other day and he showed me, showed me a picture and spoke a word to me that I feel it just really uh, resonated inside of me, and I wanted to share that with you all. So, the the picture was was of, of of a person just weighed down by a lot of baggage, and they were starting out. They were at the beginning of a of a journey, and the path God had spread out this path be, path before this person. It was beautiful, and it, and it was leading to to a place of 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 goodness and and blessing and fulfillment and fullness and the abundant blessings in favor of God. Just, I mean, it, there was there was nothing dark about this road that was ahead. But as the person started at the beginning of this journey and stood there on the path, there was so much baggage. They had so so many suitcases that were just filled with old belongings mm. and old possessions. And what I sense that the Lord is saying is that many of us are are really reaching out and desiring a new thing, or we we have this we have this thing inside of us that we want to see birth out or we're, we're ready to begin this journey and the Lord is calling us forth into the next, into the next season or further along on the road that we've been walking. But the problem is, is that we have been carrying all these things from our past with us. And the, the Lord is saying, until you release the old, I cannot fill you with the new. Mm. I cannot give you the new things, the new and abundant things I have for you because your arms are full of these suitcases that are filled with with all of the baggage, with all of the old, whatever that might be for you. I mean, it, the the contents of those baggage it could be uh, pain and wounds and and uh, false belief systems, or you know, all of these different things, negative influences, whatever they happen to be. But the Lord is saying that you've been carrying those things long enough. Like it's time to put down the old in order to embrace the new and the word many of you many of our audience right now have received and heard the lord speaking into your hearts that i am doing a new thing in your life in fact that is that is it, whenever the lord speaks that word i kind of like do you really want me to share that because that is, that has become one of the most cliche in my mm -hmm. opinion prophetic words that you can be given the lord said he's doing a new thing well you can hear that you can only hear that so many times before it just starts going in one ear and out the other but i do sense that the lord is saying, the lord has has said this to you before and he's continuing to say it to you i am doing a new thing in you and i've prepared a new place for you but you're not advancing into it because you're trying to bring everything from the past into the new land i've prepared for you and mm -hmm. there's no room there's no room in you for me to fill you with the new and abundant blessings and the new desires and to birth these dreams because you haven't let go of the things of the past and so the lord is saying put down your bags put down the suitcases and walk forward to me. And, and that, that causes some fear inside of you and, and a reaction inside of you because to walk forward without the baggage means that you're walking forward into uncertainty and unknown because it's like a safety blanket. We carry so many things with us because yeah. of the safety blanket. Oh, I have to do it this way. I, I can't survive without this. this. This thing tells me who I am, even though it's destroying me. I, mm. I don't know who I am without this thing. The Lord is saying, I am in you. You are my son. You are my daughter. That is your identity. Put down the baggage, put down the luggage and walk forward with your arms empty because you're not, you're not empty. Put down the baggage and walk forward and let me fill you with all the fullness. Let me remind you of who you are in me. Let me bring an increased awareness into who I am in you and everything that I created you to be 
and walk forward in complete reliance and dependence upon me and my provision for you. And you will see the things that you truly desire come to pass and start taking form and start being molded into your life. Mm. And so I want you to be encouraged that be, in, be encouraged that it's going to be scary to put those bags down and to leave them behind you. Uh, but until you do that, I, and this is the participation, you know, this is something that, we're, that we were, that I was going to bring up later, but it's kind of, it's relevant here. I was just uh, meeting with a friend earlier to earlier today. And he was sharing me that this, this uh, prophetic guy up in, uh, in the Florida area, he stood in the front of a large group of people. And he said, 90% of the prophetic words I give you today are not going to come to pass. And, hmm. you know, I, I've never heard a prophetic person stand up there, and, but it had nothing to do with how well he hears from God, but it has, it had everything to do with the responsibility of those hearing the word, wow. like the, the prophetic words that are getting put out there. And this prophetic word hmm. that you're hearing right now, it's going to require something of you. And if you do not participate in that, if you did not, do not put those bags down, if you do not um, step forward and trust in complete reliance and dependence upon the Lord to to do that work in you, it's not going to happen mm. because he won't he won't grab you by the throat and and rip those bags away from you and force you know it's it's not God is not a coercive God he's a he's one who invites you to participate in relationship with him yes. in order to see the abundance that he has for you come to pass. So yes, there you go. Absolutely. That's totally right on. And it's actually in line with something that the Lord showed me towards the end of the year, 2018, about wineskins and new new wine and new wineskins. I actually discovered that the two words there that Jesus uses are different two, they're two different words for the word new. I don't know if I've shared this with you, Jesse, but the word new wine and new wineskins, two different new words. And the first one is neos, meaning brand new, like a baby, like neonatal. I know that word well because I spent four months in the NICU with my son uh, in the yeah. intensive care. You know, Neo, like Neo from the Matrix, brand new, never before seen before ever, brand new like a baby. And then mm -hmm. it says Neos wine gets poured into Kynos wineskin. It's a different Greek word for new. And that word, are you ready? Are you sitting down, Jesse? That word I literally am, yes. means, yeah, good, because it means <laughs> renewed. It means what? innovated. Yes. Jesus said new wine only goes into renewed wineskins. And we're transformed wow. by the renewing of our minds. Our new self is being renewed. Our neo self is being anachinos. That's Colossians 3.10. And so it's exactly what you said. It's a biblical principle. It's a. It's actually a, the parables of Jesus and the teachings of Paul in Romans 12.2 and Colossians 3.9-10 that God is not going to put a revelation of the new self into old mindsets. Wow. God is not going to put a revelation of your new self into your old ways, your bags. God is not going to put an expression of his love in old damaged emotions. And that's why we have to partner with these words. That's why we have to be transformed. It's actually the word transfigured as in unveiled, be unveiled by the renewing of our minds. So, so as to express Christ properly. And so that that's, beautiful and what you're saying is totally biblical and you know we this verse has been posted all over the internet in the last couple of days but it's isaiah 43 i believe it says behold i do a new thing right and god doesn't yeah. do and he never does an old thing and he never does the next thing he does a new thing so god is always doing a new thing in your life and so even you know people talk about revival in this context like the worst enemy of the next revival is the current revival because we're going to try and take the what we're doing now, what God is doing now, you know, laughing, crying, falling down, floating, whatever. We're trying to make it that kind of revival tomorrow when God is just doing that today. And we have to be willing to be so relationally uh, anchored in God that we would be just at the slightest flinch of his face muscles, you know, his face muscles. We would change. We would just with the little glint of his eye, the little whisper, the little breath of God, we would move quickly with the new thing god is doing and he's not going to give you a revelation of that new thing or your new self or who you truly are if you continue to hang on to those old things those bags those things like that that weigh you down and you know the beautiful thing about this is it's our choice right we've been given the spirit of mm -hmm. self-control so you get to choose um how you carry the dreams in your heart we get to choose how we pursue 
those dreams and if we partner with them or not. And so God gives us the desires of our heart, yes, but we have to partner with God and his desires in order to carry it well. That's the idea of being a wineskin. It's a carrying device. And so for us to carry our dreams from the unseen realm into the seen realm, we have to be a renewed wineskin. They actually do that, by the way. They don't throw away old wineskins. They renew them by washing them out from the inside out with water and soaking them in oil. And that mm -hmm. process brings them back to their original place. I'm actually writing a book about it. I'm about 10,000 words into it. Renewing wineskins coming at you end of 2019, hopefully, in Jesus' name. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, that's, that's such a good word, man. Um, and so as we as we talk about our our responsibility in participating with God yes. and the things that He's spe speaking to us, let's let's talk about let's talk about those dreams. What can you can you talk about, Caleb, a little bit about what God has to say about the dreams, the 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 things that He births in us? Like I would I would call uh, Flow Fitness Boutique. That's yeah. my wife and I's business that was that was a dream that birth that god birthed in kara's heart uh so what is what does god have to say about that stuff what is what does god have to say about dreams well you know there's the dreams of the night and then there's the dreams of your heart and i think they're pretty uh parallel in the way god treats them and i'm just i'm you know fresh off the christmas story but i'm thinking about john john the baptist his father the way he responded to uh really god's dream through the angel Gabriel, the angel came and announced John's birth to Zach. I think it's Zachariah, right? And he, the guy says, basically, how can this be? Like, this is too unbelievable. And it's, it was God saying, listen, you're going to have a son and he's going to prepare the way for the Messiah. And yes, your wife is old, but it's going to happen. So again, this isn't actually, this wasn't a physical dream. But you could say God speaks through dreams in the same way. And that's what I'm thinking of currently. And so Zechariah, because he says, how, how could this ever happen? He struck mute. But Mary receives a similar encounter with an angel. And the angel says that. And she says, how will this be? Basically, okay, that's going to happen. But how, how will it happen? And so she obviously has a much better experience. Um, but Zechariah struck mute until John is born. So I think that God takes very seriously when he speaks, especially when he speaks through dreams, because he spoke to Joseph about the about Jesus being born. He spoke to angel with an or to Mary with an angel, but he spoke to Joseph through a dream. And that confirmed Mary's encounter. And also multiple times, actually, Joseph was a crazy dreamer. He had dreams about going to Egypt, you know, to save to evade Herod, I believe, you know. And so and then he was told in a dream that it was safe to go back to their hometown. So this God is definitely into guiding us with dreams. And when God births something in our heart to do, I believe that he's calling us into the invitation not to produce something, but to produce someone in us. So this is mm. this is a big deal that God is calling us to do so, to a dream like, you know, you have flow fitness and things like that. But God's main desire is not flow fitness. You know what I mean? God's main desire is Jesse becoming mm. more like Christ you know, expressing <laughs> Christ on the earth. That's God's main Come desire. On. People say, what's God's will for my life? I know God's will for your life. I know it. I can tell everyone listening. You can stop asking that question. I can tell you God's will for your life. It's Romans 8, 29. It's to be conformed to the image of the son. That's God's mm -hmm. will. Now you might, he might, you know, you have passions, you have desires. I was a musician. I can speak for myself. I had a passion and a desire all the way straight out of high school to be a full-time musician and I taught lessons and I worked very hard. I was in multiple bands. I built businesses. I toured around the United States. I played music everywhere. We hustled. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, I know I know you know about the hustle, Jesse, with flow fitness. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. The grind. The grind. We grinded it out. We hustled. But there was a moment where I was I was I was actually releasing an, a CD that night. My my band was releasing a CD, an album, and we're there on stage and I'm playing on the stage and I get totally convicted because these people have their eyes closed, their hands up and they're singing my song and I like it just a little too much. And what I mean by a little too much is a lot too much. And God like lifted the veil on my eyes and said, hey, you're using your gift I gave you as a worship leader to lead worship, but not for me. People are worshiping the entity of your band. And I quit that night. I quit on my dream, Jesse. I let it go. Hmm. I did because I, I recognized there was a higher thing 
there was something more important than that dream. There was me being formed into the image of the sun and me using my gifts to you know, empower the worshipers of God. There's a different call in my life. But that was a dream of mine that I had to let go and, quote, give up on, end quote. And we were primed to do some big things in, in the local music scene and stuff like that. So, And now I couldn't imagine, had I, had I kept that dream, uh, if I had been, you know, no, this is a dream, this is a desire in my heart and held on to it, I can't even imagine where I'd be. I, I probably wouldn't have my son. I definitely wouldn't have met my wife. You know, I mean, I my life would be totally different. And so when God is speaking and giving us dreams in our hearts, it's not so that we can accomplish something. We get the mistake, Jesse, of doing things for God. We call that like, you know, the relational Thing, like, you know, we think, oh, I do something for someone because I love them. But God doesn't want you to do anything for him in as much as he wants you to do things with him. Mm. So if you can do it with him and if it conforms you into the image of the son, God is all about it. But the minute a dream becomes self-serving and selfish or something like that, it's time to let it go. And even if the dream, if we desire more for the dream to come true than for Christ to come through us, then we have a problem. And we need to let that be our paramount goal, that Christ would be expressed through us in our everyday, mundane, whatever, non-rock star lives. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it needs to be the main goal is Christ in us, the hope of glory being expressed on the earth. And that might burst some people's balloons, but that's okay with me. It's it's not about you being having a buzzkill. It's about experiencing the pleasure that's at his right hand forevermore because you're you're continually in a relationship with him and he's being expressed through you. So I would say God is not so concerned about our products. He's concerned about our person. And so we can't let our, our dreams become uh, so low, low level. I just want to do something, you know, and we want to, we need to be someone, not just do something. And so dreams are not bad. Dreams are great. I, I'm an advocate for dreams. Go after your dreams. Absolutely. Do what makes your heart fully come alive. Do what makes your heart leap, you know? But don't let it get in. Don't let it take first place in front of, you know, understanding that even through you pursuing that dream, God wants to conform you into his dream, which is a whole, whole earth, the whole earth filled with Christ like people. You know, this, I love what Brian Simmons says. He says the father loves the son so much that he's going to fill the whole earth with people just like him. That's God's dream. <laughs> That's God's dream. Yeah. Yeah. I want to I want to focus, too on what you said about God enjoying the the passion that was coming out of your heart you you were mentioning yeah. talking a little bit about how how God was enjoying that when he saw you do that i know there are this is a time of year that many of us are are looking ahead and we we are filled with this renewed sense of of hope you know, that's that's just the way our our society and it's that's not a negative thing by any stretch of the imagination no. i i think that's actually a great positive thing that's come through through society is that we look at the beginning of the new it's like okay we got a we got a fresh start it it gives people who who struggle to have hope it gives them it gives them an opportunity to hope once again and i think that god god can do a whole lot with with just a little bit of hope like just yeah. he, can, he can work a whole lot with just a little bit of something and so as we as we look out at 2019 and and we 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 eagerly anticipate these desires and these passions that we have inside of us being manifested on the outside in some way. I want to encourage you that when you are doing, when, when you are doing the things that you're passionate about, when you are, when you are, are operating in your creativity, when you yes. are operating the giftings that God has planted inside of you, I got, I, I, I experience God as one that loves that loves to celebrate that with you. Yes. Who is smiling when you are operating in your giftings and your passions, when you are going after the, or, and pursuing, I got, got the, the idea that God has planted inside of you, that, that you, are, you are, are starting the journey of that, that God is smiling at you and saying, I'll help you every step of the way. I, I love this. Let's do this together. Let's partner in this and let's go out into the field and let's work it and get ready for a harvest that, that is coming if we can do this faithfully together. Uh, so, so I, I want to, I want to make sure that comes across because there's yes. going to come a time to where you're not as excited about this. <laughs> you're not as, as excited about this dream and not as excited about this passion because you have an enemy too, that's coming after you and saying, you can't do this. You'll fail. You won't succeed. You're going to lose everything. 
Uh, mm. You're not good enough. You know, all of those types of things. And those that voice is going to want to start getting a little bit louder in your ear once once the the emotional high that we have starts fading a little bit. But that doesn't change the truth. Emotion, e- emotions fall, rising, falling. They don't get to affect the, to affect the truth mm. of what of who God is and what He says. And so I would encourage you not to allow it. Re- remember to allow the truth of what God is saying and who He promises to be for you to remain through all circumstances, so that you don't come to a place where you're ready to give up and run back to Egypt or you give up on your dream. There are there are so many dreams that are that are that are killed and and die before they even really get a chance to start Mm. because of fear, because of fear of failure and fear, just fear kills more. Who is, who is, I think a a popular hip hop artist said it, fear kills more dreams than failure actually kills dreams. And so don't be afraid. Like God is going to be there. Even when you're not particularly there, there have been multiple points over the last 18 months to where I didn't like flow fitness very much. (laughs) <laughs> yeah you know it wasn't and it, it wasn't an enjoyable thing for me uh, but even in those times i was sustained and filled and i and i knew that we were walking where god wanted us to walk and that he was partnered with us and the the truth and the promises never change right and so you can hold on to that through the harder times and wait for god to deliver you in the harder times so that you can experience rejoice and stick with it and stay with it because that is coming yeah, that breakthrough is coming. That that fulfillment uh, is coming in in uh, every in every season. You're gonna get you're gonna get a, a piece of that. So, Amen. Absolutely. Yeah. So I I would like to to discuss though the I I mentioned one of them. Fear kills a lot of dreams, but but can why why do the dream? Why what are some other reasons why the dreams that we have fail? They never end up coming. They never end up really getting fully birthed or they, they're birthed partially and then they kind of fizzle and die. Can you, are, is there, are there any reasons that kind of stick out in your mind, Caleb, of yeah. why we experience failure in pursuing our dreams? I think timing has a lot to do with it. I think a lot of times we are, we, we think because we have a dream, it's for right now, but I found it to be wisdom to ask God about timing. Like we're God's friends, right? Like God is our friend. We don't, it's not like he hands down an order and comes through like a ticker tape thing and that's all you get. Here's what God told me. No, you can ask him, all right, when am I supposed to do this? When, when is this going to happen? And I think people who would circumvent that step actually find themselves shooting in the dark about when. And I've done that. I don't know about you, but I've said, oh, I have a dream. This is great. And I try and I don't have the resources to actually accomplish it yet. And it's because God Mm -hmm. was actually just putting a seed of a dream in my heart and let it wanted it to grow with anticipation until I had the resources, and then I could pursue it with excellence. So I think that's one element. Uh, timing is a problem for many of us because we don't actually ask the question. You know, often we don't even ask, "Is it the right time to do this?" Or you know, because we think if God tells us, then it must be the right time. If God shows us something, it must be the right, must be the right time. I think this happens a lot with prophetic words too. People have discernment about someone. And they don't even ask God if they're supposed to tell them. They just tell them. But sometimes God just (laughs) talks to you about stuff so you can pray and intercede for them. You know what I mean? It's not always for you to, you know, bust somebody's head up, you know, or their ears open with it. You know, like, God told me this about you. You know, it's not always for you to deliver. And it may never be for you to deliver. And the same thing goes with our dreams. We need to ask, is this the time to do this? Is this the time to release this? The other thing I see is, um, you know, this is people, a lot of people in my circles don't like to talk about this, but, you know, it's a, we live in a war zone down here. You know, we didn't get like zapped out of here when we said yes to Jesus, like beam me up, Scotty. We're here to advance the kingdom. And that means there's going to be resistance, you know, like it says, we lift the shield of faith to extinguish all the fiery darts of the enemy. That means fiery darts of the enemy are coming. (laughs) Like yes. people don't want to talk about it, but the kingdom of God is forcefully advancing. And that doesn't, you know, that doesn't mean you're going to get a bunch of horrible, you know, wounds and you should be struggling all the time. I believe in spiritual joy fair. First of all, I think spiritual warfare is supposed to be fun because we always are supposed to be winning, you know, in the end, you're going to win. So it should be fun. Right. Even in setbacks, you just go, well, I'm going to, I'm going to win eventually. So it's all good. I'm a pretty competitive person. And so I like winning. And we're born to win. 
And so, but in that, with that element, us being on earth, we are here to reform the earth. We are the reformation. We are the ones who are supposed to make this place look like God's place. Thy kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That means we have to, you know, enforce the will of God. The will of God is to love all people. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's the deal. And so in our pursuing of dreams, there is resistance. And so man-made resistance, whatever enemy laden resistance, you know, there's, there's, been times in my life that you I know God told me to do something and then I went to go do it and somebody opposed me and I didn't get to do it and that you know you could say oh that was the devil or you could just say hey that person was having a really bad day and doesn't like me very much it doesn't matter there's resistance you know what I mean and so Paul yeah. experienced resistance he he said he was resisted by the devil to come to the people he's writing to I don't remember the reference for that but he says I wanted to come but the devil resisted us what is that Where's that in our victorious yeah. theology? It should be present. We need to understand that God is birthing dreams in us and we have dreams and we want to do great things and great exploits, but there is resistance. So I think timing and resistance are two major things that send it to the fizzle zone in our dreams. Yeah, dude, you're checking the things right off my list. I had I had you know, just the the battle that we're in down here is one mm. of the one of the culprits of why some of our dreams fail as well. For example, for example, so we are, my wife and I, we are currently pursuing our second location, Flow Fitness Boutique, our second location. And there is a location that we have, that we have eyed that we would really like the, but that's not up to us. It's up to the land, the landlord deciding that we would be a good fit there. And there's already a, a gym that's not in our market but are they're leasing a pretty big space and they have a lot of influence to say who goes in to that plaza and who doesn't. Mm. So we feel there, there have been enough confirmations that we feel good about pursuing this option. We feel like we're doing what God wants us to do, but we, there is a, there's a chance that the landlord could talk to this other gym and they could say no. And that's not going to be the place for us because they're not going to let us in. We're going to be praying the opposite, right? You know, but there are other agents mm -hmm. involved here. And I think that sometimes when we experience a block, there's something that there, there's something that we feel like God has confirmed. He's spoken on our hearts and we've gone and we've pursued it. And there is a block that happens. Somebody says no, or something gets sold or something doesn't pan out the way that we thought that, that it was going to, for all intents and purposes, it right. should have happened this way. It didn't happen that way. Right. And I think that, that the temptation for us or the way that we have typically respond, responded to that is as uh, evangelicals is, is by saying, Oh God didn't, Oh God didn't want that to happen. Right. Or God, God must've closed that door. Well, that's absolutely, sometimes that's absolutely true. I think that God can close doors in sure. order to direct you towards what he really wants you to do. But I think it's also very likely that that actually is what God wanted. But sometimes the darkness wins the battles. You know, it's like you said that we have already, we, the war is already done. Right. You know, that's like, we've already, we, God is, God is one. Like we are victorious. We are, we are more than conquerors. We are overcomers. Yeah. We are victors. But there are battles within that, that sometimes the, the enemy uh, he, he wins, you know, and, and blocks us for whatever reason. The beautiful part in that, and I think the reason why we so often default that, say, oh, God must have not wanted that for us, is because God already has plans B through Z in line huh. for that. So like if, plan, if plan A doesn't work, he's got the rest of the alphabet to, uh -huh. to work with and often often plans b through z end up working out better than plan a would have maybe it takes a little bit longer but often because he just because you don't get plan a doesn't mean that the promise that god is taking you from glory to glory goes away right no i the the promise is the same if you have to if you wind up at plan d because the first options were blocked by the kingdom of the kingdom of darkness then that plan D will eventually bring more abundance to your life than plan than plan A might have. I mean, it's so I, you yeah. know, that that's the beauty of it. And that's the response of God. But, but yeah, I think that that sometimes the, the, the enemy just, just uh, manipulates and uses the, the things that he has influence over in order to, to throw a wrench into things.
Absolutely. And our understanding of the of the word of God, from my perspective, is actually the key to to keeping our hearts content. And, you know, the one thing we need to level up on in our understanding of the word of God is things like Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you. Everyone knows this verse to prosper you, not to harm you, give you hope in a future. Well, the word plans there is a yeah. very poor translation of that Hebrew word. It's a very low translation. It's like uh, if there was a 100% accuracy scale on, in Hebrew, which there isn't because it's homonymic and vague as all get out. But if there was 100%, I would put that at a 10% uh, effective translation. The word there is actually purposes. I know the purposes I have for mm. you. Here they are. I'm going to prosper you. I'm not going to harm you. I'm going <laughs> to give you hope. You're going to have a future. Those are my purposes for you. But we take, you know, the plans I have for you and we think, okay, he, I, he said, go here. Now he said, turn left. Now he said, turn right. Why isn't this working out? You said you had plans for yeah. me. You know, it's, it's a misunderstanding of things like that, that, you know, we are dealing with, you know, three or four times removed from the original language here and biblical Hebrew isn't even spoken today. So there's a translation error there, which is understood. But it's actually purposes. It's like a big old blueprint. Like you said, it's B through Z, right? Plan A is this. Okay, B through Z. The point is not to be productive. It's to be a person in love with God mm -hmm. and in love with people. So that's the point. God is sure going to have you do things, and there's going to be awesome things to, to do on the planet Earth. But that's not God's overall plan. God's overall plan is that you would be a lover of God and a lover of people and He's going to accomplish that. He has a million different ways to get you to the coffee shop. You know what I'm saying? And it's called uh -huh. Hebrews. And you're going to get there, and it's going to taste great. Don't worry. <laughs> 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 I think I remember that. That was like a sixth grade joke. It's man. so bad. I just decided. <laughs> I just decided. I was going for it. So there you go. <laughs> Good night, everybody. We're out. <laughs> Yeah, so you're totally right, man. I love that B to Z example. He's got B to Z already in the chamber, and we don't need to freak out when something doesn't go the the right way the first time, you know. So so good. Yeah, I think that the thing that will mess with with some people with with that is the the whole what I would call a misconception of God's God's sovereignty, which is a whole yes. other thing. But but just if if that twists you up that to the idea that the enemy can thwart plan a then take it to the lord and have a discussion with him about it you know right. don't just don't yeah. just shut it out it's okay it's it's okay that that makes you uncomfortable mm -hmm. so let it let it spark your curiosity and let it spark your spark your desire for truth and go find out more about it yeah uh, that's all that's all i really have to say about that well i uh, i think i have one thing to ahead. say about that that the sovereignty of god i i don't claim to understand that word sovereignty but for us to say really, 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 really ignorant things like God is in control is very damaging. God is in charge and he is controlling things, but not the way you would control things. All right. So God is in control, but not like you would be in control or I would be in control or like anyone else would be in control. God is not. I like to say it this way. God is not in control. God is in love. God is sovereign. God is in charge and he's given the earth to mankind the psalmist says he's given the earth to the sons of men so we're in control down here and there's an enemy of that of those agendas and it's very biblical but i love what you said jesse just take it to the lord ask god talk about it it's, the only thing it can hurt is you are confirmed in your thinking that we're wrong so hallelujah go for it yeah <laughs> just don't just don't say me just don't say mean things about us on facebook oh oh man I, is that can we actually submit for that <laughs> <laughs> that's a possibility <laughs> oh no no oh, it's okay. you have to be mean on facebook that's kind of one of the rules uh, i think so uh, no twitter that's like the, the rule that's the rule for twitter you got to be mean on twitter yeah i don't really use twitter that much actually so that's probably a positive thing yeah um i i think that one of the other big things of why dreams fail at times is because we at yeah here's here's an example we you, me, whoever, we're sitting in a conference, let's say, and there's a prophetic minister who is now coming and making his way through the crowd. I don't know why this is getting so detailed. I, that's a story. I'm a storyteller. What can it's I good. say? I like so it. The, yeah, <laughs> this, this uh, prophetic guy with a long beard, kind of rough exterior, tattoos up and down his arms. Are you, are you, you know, talking about me right now? 
Jesse. <laughs> not, not unless you somehow got an eye patch. Oh, I didn't hear that since part. last time I've seen you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here, here he comes and he prophesies to. He says, he says, the Lord, I, the Lord is saying, or I sense that the Lord is saying that that uh, you you love computers and that he's going to have he 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 has a project for you that's going to involve computers and and you're going to in 10 years you're going to you're going to be this this person you're going to build this supercomputer so we go and we just sit and we do nothing for 20 years mm. and we're like oh man i remember 20 years ago this guy told me i was going to have a supercomputer that i built myself and it was going to control all the banks of the world you know whatever and it never happened. You know, God must have, that guy must have missed her or God really let me down. False it's like, prophet. no, you've been sitting on your butt. Yeah. Yeah. You've been sitting on your butt for 20 years and you haven't gotten up and done anything about the word that God mm. spoke into your life. And this, I'm not, I'm not trying to condemn anybody or bring shame in anybody's life. This is a partnership we're talking about. When yes. God speaks something over you, he, he expects you to partner with him. He, he desires you to partner with him in it. He, he does his part. He's going to allow you to do your part. Yes. He is most, most of the time, I know there's always exceptions and that God, God does some things that, um, that are just crazy sovereign and good and awesome. But for most of us, most of the time, we are going to have to participate and do our part in order to see our dreams come to pass. Like we have to actually get out there, get in the dirt, get, engage our wills, learn something new. Uh, this, I, I was meeting with a friend of mine and he was telling me that he was going to school to get a degree to get all all the knowledge that he needs now for a a word that God spoke to his heart that he has no current evidence is going to come to pass. Hmm. Like he he is so believing in this word that God spoke into his heart. He's going he's going and enrolled in the college courses to learn about it. You know it's like that is not something that you see every day. Somebody somebody being that proactive about something that they yeah. that, that God spoke to their hearts. I'm going to prepare for that even though there's no current evidence that that's going to happen. I believe it. I'm going to be prepared for it. So when it does happen, I'm going to be ready to step right into it. And unfortunately, I think that's a rarity and unusual case. If God speaks a word in your heart, places a dream, unveils a desire of your heart, prepare for it. Yeah. And ask the questions like Caleb was saying, is it time for that? You know, it, it, is it time for me to step out into that? If you're feeling that it's time to go, then get it, get out there into the field do what you need to do to learn the things that you don't know. Right. Take the risk and step step out in faith. Surround yourself with wise counsel. Get out there and pick up the tools and partner with God and, to see those dreams become a reality. Because if you don't and you choose to sit on the sideline, you're going to be wondering in 30 years why your dream never happened. Right. And it's going to be because you never you never opened your door and stepped out. You never took the tools that God was placing in front of you. And and I I know that I've I have experienced some of that. I can look back at. I'm, I'm only 36 years old and I can look back and say, oh, you know, there was an idea that guy gave me. I never did anything with it. So, of course, it never came, it never came to pass. You know, nothing ever happened. It, it's, that doesn't mean it's too late right. necessarily, but it, it does mean that there's been a lot of time that has passed and, and it could have been time that, that it was very productive. What do you think? Absolutely. And God loves to be believed. John 6, 29, Jesus said, the work of God is to believe on whom he had sent, to believe in the son. So God is absolutely calling us into partnership and I actually heard a story um, of a pretty famous, well-known prophet guy that um, he told, and I won't say his name because it doesn't matter. But he had a couple down, you know, they were pro they were like getting in line for for a word or whatever altar ministry, and he came up to him and said to the woman, "Oh, I see you leading worship and uh, writing beautiful songs that really please the Lord's heart and and really captivating a generation with music and things like that." And she interrupts the prophet guy. <laughs> And says, no, no, that's for my <laughs> husband. And the guy's like, what? And she says, he's he's the worship leader at our church. That's for my my husband. And the, the prophet guy actually told her to shut up. <laughs> he <laughs> said, shut up, lady. And I don't recommend that. But he said, shut up. Do you not know how a prophetic <laughs> word works? When God speaks, he creates. And you get the opportunity to step into that co-creation with God. And she's like, but I'm tone wow. deaf. I'm tone deaf. It's my, that's definitely for my husband. And he said, okay, test this word, go home, st take piano lessons and start trying to see what happens. So she, from that moment just said, all right, God, if this is you, then give me the power to do it, whatever. She starts taking piano lessons. And wouldn't you know, she now has multiple albums out and she is leading worship and beautiful songs. She's written things like that. 
and it took a few years, but she partnered with the word because someone told her what, how it actually worked. It doesn't just like God says it. And then, you know, not, not every time, like you mentioned earlier, it's sovereign. God does sovereign things sometimes, but most of the time, God just wants to be believed and wants to be partnered with. Mm -hmm. So because of that, she's now, they're like leading with each other. And it's a beautiful thing in their marriage and it's done amazing things for their church and all of that. So it's about understanding the partnership element. And that is exactly what God wants. He doesn't want robots that he downloads programs into. He wants people who will partner with him because they love him, because they love to work together. It's a co-laboring. We're co-laboring with God, laboring in union with God. And that absolutely applies to our dreams. Even the dreams you don't know you had, because God can say, you're going to do this. And you're like, that sounds terrible. And then you start doing it and you love it. I'm a living proof of that. Okay. For two and a half uh -huh. years, my wife told me I was going to start a church. I was like, you are crazy. Take your medicine. Go back to the loony bin. I will institutionalize you. You keep saying that crazy stuff. Uh -huh. All right. Because I did not want to do it. I was like, no way, bro. Not a chance. I do not want that. I do not want that headache. And here I am, we launched three months ago this Sunday, and it is the joy of my life. I love it. It's so much fun, and I love my team. I could not imagine not doing it. So thankfully, after a few years, I yielded to that word and started, you know, asking around, talking to people, partnering with it, and here we are, bang, and God is blessing it. So Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think part of the problem is that sometimes – part of the problem, I think, is that when God – when God lays a dream on our hearts or when we start feeling that passion, it's already in line with something that we are good at. Yeah. You know, not, it's not too often that God lays a desire, or passion on our hearts, something that is completely foreign to us. Like even you as a pastor, the, the roles and responsibilities of a pastor are things that were already in line to your heart. You just like the whole, it was the other things. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you are, you already love to, you are, you already love to speak to people lead people, inspire people, encourage people. I mean, all those things were already in line with, with a lot of, of your passion and desire. Right. So I think that the, the problem is that sometimes we think we're already, we're good enough at it already. We don't need any other, we don't need right. any other help. And I, I'm telling you that you, you were given a certain amount of, of talent and ability, but that's got to be developed and you don't yep. know everything yet. There's still things that you need to learn from others who have gone before you. There are still classes that you need to take lessons that you that you need to take in order for you to be able to step in to to all that god has for you and that's not a shot you shouldn't be ashamed of that right you god has given you a tremendous amount of talent but it still needs to be refined and developed and so go get it developed amen <laughs> and be willing to partner with the process that god gives you to develop it yeah because it might not yeah. look like what you want it to yeah. look like so amen right yes um, we got a few minutes left. Can we can we talk a little bit about when it when it's time to let go? Sure. Of a dream, like is that? Let's. I I gave you an example. We talked a little bit before. I gave you an example. Let's say you are a person who really desires to be married. So you you have this great desire. You want to be married. You want to be in a relationship. All of a sudden, you're 80 years old, and it hasn't happened for you yet. Um, or you want to have a, a child of your own. You you have this dream to birth your own, your own child. It's a, you know, adoption and, and foster care, you know, that's fine. That's a possibility, but you, your dream was to birth um, something, a child of your own. And that hasn't happened. At what point is, is it even okay to ask a question? Should we let this dream go? And at, at what point is that okay? And how do you do it? Like, how, how do you do it in a way that builds you up? I, I mean, these are, cause mm. these are real questions, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's a tough, that's a, that's a tough thing. It is. Absolutely. So let's let's ask first. Is, is it okay sometimes to let go of a dream? I believe so. I've I, not in uh, not in the those contexts, but I have let go. Like I talked earlier about being a rock star, I let go of that dream. Um, I wanted to be a musician that traveled the world and wrote songs. I wanted to write anthems for my generation. I had mission statements. I had the whole thing. I had a vision. I had vision. I had talent. I had vision. I had drive. I had everything necessary. And I just, I let it go because it was, it became something that was not um, conforming me into the image of the sun and not, it was something that I wasn't supposed to be doing any longer. So for me, I, I let go of that dream and I think that's okay. Now that's not nearly as volatile, maybe sounding, but to me, it was a big deal. It was like my whole life, all I did was play in rock bands, you know, and write music and things like that. So 
that may come back around. I'm writing worship songs now with themes and things like that. So I find that if we let go of the form of the dream we have, God can even upgrade uh, those desires into another form of something similar, like people who maybe are in that terrible situation where they just feel like they just want to have a child that just can't. And my wife, you know, she and I have experienced that for not for very long, but it took her a little while to get pregnant. And that was difficult to wait on. And we did have a son, but some people who just don't um, have that experience. Maybe it's time to ask God, is there another form of this dream that would bring me even more joy um, to have? Like, you know, you mentioned a couple of things like parent, foster parenting, adoption, things like that. People would say, no, I want it this way. But God might have something even more fulfilling and beautiful for you in another form of that dream if you would let go of the form you're currently asking for. So that's just that's really tough to answer. And that's just my submission. I said, maybe that's it. I'm not speaking in, you know, direct lines, putting lines down and saying it's this or that. It's both and. And I believe it takes major discernment and inquiry, inquiring of the Lord saying, is it time for me to let go of this dream? Yeah, and I think that that's where I was going to go with it as well. I think you hit right on it when you said it, it, instead of asking, is, is it time to let go of this dream? The better question, like you said, might be, is it time to let go of this form yeah. of the, the dream? Right. And as you were talking, Caleb, I just, I just felt like, like the, or the Lord brought this to my mind. And he just said, don't be rigid. Mm. Like if you're, if you're going to be rigid, if you have a rigid outlook and you're going to be inflexible and say, okay, my dream is to be an author. And that means that I have to have an agent sell to the top publishing house and sell a million copies and, and hit the New York times bestseller list on the first release. Right uh you're probably going to be pretty disappointed you know pray, praise god if that happens for you yeah you know, and that's great but most of us are going to be disappointed if we're going to be that rigid and inflexible mm. and so i would i would say that too i would in total agreement with that i th i think the question to ask is when is it time to let go of the form of the dream and i think that is so applicable to all of these circumstances your when you let go of the form of of your rock star dream your musician dream God brought you into something that has been more fulfilling yes. and rejuvenate and, and impassionating. Is that even a word? I don't care. Sure. It, it's, it is now. Yeah. yeah. Then I'm, sh then I'm sure you can even imagine the rock star dream, like, like where, where you're at now and what you've done with music and where that is taking you and how you're still incorporating that into the things that you're doing. I, I'm, I'm sure that the fulfillment from that, when you look back and say, Oh man, but I could have been a rock star. I, I can't imagine, I don't want to speak for you, but I feel like I'm going to right now. Like that probably, that probably doesn't even hold a candle it doesn't. to what you're feeling right now, You're right? totally right. And I've gone actually, yeah. I've actually played music in over eight countries around the world. I've taken my guitar around the world, all over the United States. I've actually done the traveling musician thing and <laughs> in different languages, different cultures. And it's all been, you know, in worship of Jesus. And it has been way more fulfilling than just topping the charts and making a bunch of money absolutely way more fulfilling yeah and so i would encourage you that if you have been rigidly pursuing a form of the dream that's in your heart i would encourage you to start asking god is it time to uh, to allow him to start molding that to look like something new hmm. because i think we've talked about already maybe it was god's plan a to have you experience it like you're seeing it now in your mind like exactly like you see it now in your mind Maybe that is the way that God's plan A had it, but for whatever reason, God had to move on to plan B. And mm. so I would encourage you to start releasing it has the, the feeling or the internal dialogue that says it has to look like this. Once right. you start saying it doesn't have to look like this, then I, then you're going to open yourself up to so many new ways that that passion can come out of you and, mm -hmm. and, and affect the world around you and you're going to find that you're going to you're going to influence and make and touch so many more people's hearts by saying it doesn't have to look like i thought it, it had to look like then if you just rigidly held to that and and you influence nobody at all because you were so inflexible that you right. didn't move at all right and so i would i would say that that when you let go of the need for it to look a certain way God is now has the ability to mold it into to new forms and new dreams. And 
the promises of God are true, are yes and amen. Everything's fulfilled in Christ, but it, everything is true. The promises don't change. No matter what happens in your daily life, no matter what circumstances you grow through, the promises don't change. That's and the right. promise is that God is going to continue to build you up. He's, he's not going to bring destruction into your life. He, he loves you. It's not even his character. That's antichrist to, mm -hmm. to bring destruction and, 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 uh, and, heartbreak and all those things that that is not the kingdom of god that's a completely different kingdom and so no matter what's going on if god has to god, if god has to move to plan on to plan b and it takes a, and your dream takes a different form that is going to be way more abundant than anything that you could have imagined than anything you could have hoped for Amen. so so be flexible you know move and breathe like god God moves and his breath is in you. We move and we breathe and we act and we speak in him. We have his mind. We have the mind of Christ. Let's be flexible with him. Let's make that a reality in our lives as we consider our dreams and move forward into them. Amen. Love it. All right. Thank you so much. I think that's all, that's all the time we got, Caleb. And yeah. that's, that's it, man. We're, we're, done, we're done for this time. I think it's you great, know? man. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. This has been uh, the Other Side Podcast with Jesse and Caleb. We appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for the reviews. Please uh, go on and subscribe and share with your friends and, and leave us a review on iTunes. It really does make a huge difference and we really appreciate you guys. Email us jberkey at jesseberkey.com. Reach out to us on social media. If you have any feedback, we'd love to hear from you. And we will see you next time.